Hey y'all, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the AJ Red Show. Tonight we're going to talk about now the Real Housewives of Atlanta and the fuckery going on over there with this book and all this other shit that uh, Ralph got going on and Marla with these kids. Y'all ready to talk about this shit? Because y'all know if y'all not, I am. Let's go. It's the AJ Red Show. Starring me, AJ Red. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Now let's get into it. What's going on? What's going on? And welcome back to another episode of the AJ Red Show. Tonight I'm talking about nothing else uh, other than the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Of course, you can tell from the background behind me and of course the fucking preview in the beginning of the video, right? But anyway, before I start with the video, I want to go ahead and thank my new subscribers for joining the page. I want to thank all of you who have taken the time to stop by, hang out with me, chat a little bit, you know, shoot the bull, all that kind of bullshit there. And um, if you haven't already and you are new to the page, please go ahead at this present moment. Take this time now to um, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that like button. That's that thumbs up button. <clears throat> I pretty much always plan to have a good time on here. Um, if you're new to the page. So, like I said, buckle your seatbelt. I run a little behind my videos, but fuck that, like I told y'all. I have a 9587, whatever the fuck you want to call it. I got to make the money on the front end before I make it over here on the back end, over here on YouTube, but I'm doing it anyhow. So jumping right into the episode of Married to Medicine. I'm sorry, shit, Married to Medicine. I'm all over the fucking place. The Real Housewives of Atlanta. I'm thinking about that because I got to watch it later on. But anyway, uh, the opening scene was Ace going to his acting lessons. Um, I found that to be really, really adorable. He was actually trying his best to get that uh, that line out about the uh, peanut butter stuck on the roof of his mouth and it tastes so good or whatever. I, just a little line to run through, I guess, to get everything started. But it seems like he's doing well. And shout out to Candace for even um, starting him off as young. We already seen her potty train him at what, fucking six months, nine months years old, uh, nine months old. So it's no, uh, it's no it's nothing weird that she's having him in acting classes and all that uh, already. Um, let me see what the fuck is going with this. All this shit going around. Fuck all that. We're going to get on with the video. Um, Marlo talking to Crystal about bringing the boys back to the house. She's sitting and asking all them questions about... And, and Crystal was talking about how the boys not taking no shower and all this other bullshit over there at the house. But I guess I can understand why. Because one of the young men said, fuck, one of the good things about being back over there tomorrow was having a, uh, his own bed to sleep in and a clean bathroom to take a shower or uh, bath in. So apparently... They was basically saying in some lights or so many words that uh, Crystal House was a shithole, <laughs> for lack of a better phrase. But Marla was talking about how she's waiting for the, the boys to come back the following night. And Crystal was like, fuck that. I'll bring them to you tonight if you fuck around with that bullshit. And, of course, Mr. Billy was sitting over in the car with his ear missing all kinds of fucked up, looking, waiting for the boys to come back to see how much more they're going to abuse him when they make it back over there to the house. Um, Drew... Uh, after having her surgery on her Achilles, after busting her ass over there in Jamaica, um, she had the surgery on the Achilles, 20 stitches. You know, she was pretty much out of it. She was drunk off them drugs, the kind that the doctor prescribed for her surgery. Let me make that clear because I want y'all going through no other shit. Lying and saying I said this and said that. But um, while she was in her healing process and child, the chef was over there cooking it up and dishing it up. I clearly felt like she knew that Sheree and uh, Sanya was going to be stopping by sometime soon because although she has a, 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 a pretty big family, I felt like, God damn, that's a lot for a bitch that's on, you know, just had surgery and on them, on them pills and don't even know where she at, let alone where her mouth is with the fork. But anyway, nevertheless, Sheree came and stopped by the house and said, even though they didn't get along that well and all this different stuff, she still wanted to treat her as a human being, come by and check on her and all that good shit. Also, while she was dragging and dropping bones over there in Sonya's ear about the shit she was talking to Kenya about over there in Jamaica on a little um, sugarcane ride. That's what I call it because I don't know what the fuck they call it. On a sugarcane lake ride. And so she was busy. She, like, like she couldn't wait for Sonya to get there to actually spill that information and put it in Sonya's ear, telling her basically how Kenya stated that she thought Ross was being a little bit aggressive, you know, by... Uh, snapping off at the women when they were going at it with his wife back and forth, stepping in, standing in the gap to protect his wife from shit that she pretty much kind of started, honestly, y'all. But um, Charade, you know, conveyed that to Sanya, and then, of course, Sanya decides to get on the phone. And I don't know why the fuck she decided to get up on the phone and keep calling Kenya when Kenya hung up on her motherfucking times more times than Bell South 
uh, uh, AT and T, uh, Verizon, or disconnected a bitch bill and charge him a recharge or uh, re uh, boot service charge fee. Whatever the fuck you want to call it, boot service fee to turn it back on. Fuck. Um. But uh, she just couldn't wait to drop that bone, and I don't understand why Senior decided to call Kenya. You know, with 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 all due respect, honestly, she should have just waited till they were face to face and have that conversation between the two of them. Basically, she shouldn't have had the fucking conversation at all because really, Ross was out of line for stepping in some women's shit. His wife should have been able to defend herself as long as they weren't putting their hands on her. He shouldn't open his motherfucking mouth. I said it last time. I'll say it again. Let her fight her own motherfucking battles, especially when she chooses to pick the motherfuckers. Because she picked up that woman over there in Jamaica. Kenya ain't no angel by long by a long shot. But Sandy been picking and she even said she couldn't articulate her fucking self when given the floor to say why she actually had a problem with Kenya. <clears throat> so with that, also, I couldn't believe that Kenya actually denied saying this shit when she done said it several times. And it's on camera. I mean, come the fuck on. But Sandy, grow the fuck up. If you can't stand the heat, stay out of the kitchen. Um... What the fuck else was going on? Um, Sheree's, um, Sheree's saying she already spent a million dollars on um, this motherfucking fashion show. Where's that? I would love to see it because you don't have any <clears throat> any product other than a motherfucking cute ass. Because um, I got to say they were, they were really cute. Uh, invitations with the designs in them. But you ain't got not a motherfucking sample for even the model to put on. To walk down the runway, you got the damn show coming up in two weeks. <clears throat> what the fuck you got going on? And that's why I say, you know, is she giving us a big build up to something like Candace say she giving everybody the worries and shit? Well, apparently not, cause she's saying the shit stuck over in Alaska. Now, I don't know what cause she. It took her a long time to get these fabrics, y'all. And I don't know what the fuck she might have went over there and picked that it had to come from way up out of Alaska or make a pit stop over in Alaska on the way to the uh, ATL where the peaches hang out at. But them got to be some badass fabrics. They must have came from Zimbabwe, uh, uh, Talio Muhushu, or some shit like that, or from over there where um, um, Anila's people from, or we should wear, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Listen, um, the casting call for Sheree's models was a fucking mess, a, a, an atrocity. I've seen better casting calls for church. It was a fucking mess. All them people walked up in there. Most of them were too short. They don't seem to have even looked at the profiles before even scheduling the folk. Or uh, basically, it seemed like she just put out something on Facebook or Twitter or something that said, I'm giving cast calls tomorrow at 12. Uh, this is the address. Meet me over there if you can and bring whatever you got. Because quiet as kept shit. Uh, King was like the girl didn't have any information on back of the, the paper that was given to Naomi Campbell, one of the best walks and faces on, on, the, on the runway over there at the trials. At the, at the trials. But... Liberal One and Kenya was just giving each other the motherfucking blues the whole way through. I don't understand. I understood some of Kenya's points, but Kenya was, of course, coming on very fucking strong and trying to take the woman's job. The woman like, bitch, look, I understand. <clears throat> I want to do this my way because I got to earn my coin. If you keep fucking around like this, this bitch here already on a budget and don't pay nobody. She fuck around there and lie but not pay me and get rid of me and keep your ass on a cheaper budget. So hush down. Keep quiet and let me run this motherfucking show. Listen. Rowan was basically telling Kenya, it was only one thing, bitch. I'm fucking this cat, bitch. You just hold the legs. And uh, <laughs> Kenya wasn't getting the motherfucking gist of the story. And Rowan just kept telling her, bitch, this my puss. I'm fucking it. You just hold the legs for me. That's all I need you to do. Why you here minding my business? Mind the business that pays you, bitch, is what she was telling Kenya. And Kenya wasn't getting paid a dime to be there. But Rowan said she was getting paid to be there. It was her job. And she said she wanted to keep it strictly professional and not be rubbing her ear all on that man's body and shit doing an interview for one of y'all to get sued up over there in front of the cameras on Bravo behind the scenes. <clears throat> keep your hands off the men's with rubbing Earl. Did y'all see the look on that little Asian man's face when they mentioned that little penis thing, the little mesh penis part on the what's the face? And then Bravo's so fucking messy, they took the camera and angled it on the man dangling. And God knows they were talking about crop watching. And I... I you ain't heard it from me, but what nothing there to be watching on a little Asian man, but they did put that camera in front of that man's jeans. Um, but the cast call was, was 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 a bunch of bullshit. Um, Ralph in this motherfucking book. Look, Ralph, go sit your ass down somewhere. And listen, at first I was all about the book because I didn't know too much about I thought maybe at some point he would go ahead and decide that he would go ahead and adopt little Josiah, which he's saying he's raising him. 
um, which he is. He's the present father in Josiah's life. So my whole thing is, this is my point. Fuck what the other niggas say. You feel me? He been in, he been locked up. Now he out of jail. What the fuck is he doing? You can contribute all, to this household all you want to, but I'm I'm running this again. I'm fucking this cat. You just hold a leg. So with that being said, you did all your fuck shit. You were offered a place in Josiah's life, but as far as me asking you if, if, if I can adopt him, bitchy, I'm already feeding him out of my pocketbook. He already did it down in my wallet. I ain't got, you didn't have to ask me for that. So I'm not about to come to you and ask you if I can adopt. No, fuck that. I adopted him the day I put him up in this bitch, married his mama, and and and, 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 take, and help take care of this house. So that still to me is bullshit, Ralph. So fuck off with the bullshit. Uh, keep that bookie over there taking pictures and shit. Want to look all dab and air. You more concerned about the motherfucking payday from the book and, 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 and the status and the clout you'll get from the book than you are about the family dynamic that the book is supposed to uh, 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 identify with, that it's supposed to stand for, that you're saying, the step in parenting. Motherfucker, one of the steps is to go ahead and adopt that boy, bitch. Mama keep asking you, and so does his grandma. Why the, when, when Josiah asked me, bitch, Josiah, honestly, don't give a fuck. He really doesn't give a fuck. The last time I seen Josiah on camera, he didn't give a fuck about you or his daddy. He had other things on his mind, childlike things. But of course, I'm sure those things will come to grow and, and maybe bother him later on in the future. Uh, thus, so you waiting on a child to come to you and ask you to be their daddy? Get the fuck out of here. You did that when you when you, when you bought the cow. You, you took the calves, you crazy motherfucker. What's wrong with you? Put that, leave that book on the shelf. Uh, 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 shelf them fucking pictures you done took. Shelf that book, sit the fuck down somewhere. Then when you adopt your side and come out here and tell the world about it, then I'll be ready to go over there and look at the book, you know, the step in parenting. Other than that, get the fuck out of my face. Um, Marlo getting them boys finally back to the house. All that motherfucking Mar uh, money Marlo uh, has over there that she been, you know, slow pimping and chimping and chiseling off of me. And I know she's building a house, but God damn. But you always wearing Fendi and Gucci. I know you're recycling and turning your closet into a fucking business, bitch. That ain't nothing but um, out of the closet or, or not even a thrift store. What do you call it? Uh, uh, um, Play-Doh's closet or some shit? She won't let you buy her shit. You can rent it, send it to the dry cleaners, and get it back. Get it back to her in good condition. <clears throat> but other than that, all that money she over there, say she's sitting on there making, she's sitting around and eating all these good grand-ass motherfucking dinners and throwing these parties. For her friends and herself and whatnot and all these adventures, you know, up in the fucking mountains and shit in the cabin. But you got them boys back on their first night back. This bitch got look like what is probably tombstone pizza, some dry ass, dead ass, malictified ass, uh, fucked up pizza on the pan. It looked like some bacon or some tater tots or some fucking chicken bites. I know they're just children, but god damn, you, you couldn't uh, prepare a little, a little, a little uh, some fried fish. A little salad, a little salad for the boys and sit down starting the first night off as a family dinner. Now you and the boys are really getting to know each other. Then set the ground rules. Ask them how they feel coming back to the house. Ask them what the fuck went on over there at Crystal's house because apparently the boys say the tub was dirty, you know, and they had to share a bed and all that shit. So apparently you wasn't sending Crystal enough money over there to the house to her and her husband. But you could have sat down with a nice little dinner with you and them boys and had them be served by you or somebody serve y'all and shit like you normally do a little lobster, a little crab. And so, you know, this is the life that you all can have if you all go to school and do what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to be uh, awarded all the time for going to school. This is what you're supposed to do as a child. But th this is the life that you can live. And I want to help you get there. And also, you're going to go to family therapy and counseling. Now, you, this bitch bust out the pizza pans and shit with the foil paper, bitch. The foil paper. The way they did it back there in, in, in the gap when they had the, but the paper food stamps and some of them still doing it. I ain't gonna lie, sometime I fuck around with it if I wanna scorch my pen and get them stuck to that motherfucker. But this bitch got all this money. I'm pretty sure she got better nonstick shit than I even got in my kitchen. And she got near to layer that thing with some uh, uh, some foil paper and throw a couple of slices on. You, you could have at least made a DiGiorno, fuck. Because that tombstone piece was dead out of luck, bitch. Um, but yeah, she could have did better with that. What else they got? That surprise party for Marlo and, and 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 Kenya was it was nice. It was it was a nice thought. I'm, I'm, I I I like the fact that they got the girls together, the two Aquarius girls, days apart. That they know didn't fuck with each other. They know don't like each other. They know can't stand each other. But what the fuck? Let's throw these bitches a conjoining birthday party, right? Let's get them together. We don't want no mess. We don't want no fuckery. We know they hate each other, but let's throw them a party together. 
Four things. Let's do that. And with with Drew having this idea, apparently we're gonna see it in the blogs, because fuck, I know already seen this shit. Sheree, she by Sheree, apparently not, don't pay. Uh y'all should have listened to little Antoinette uh uh when this girl had him on her team. Cause apparently she might have got rid of him, or at least took him out the camera to keep her the fall for back. But y'all should listen to the little girl. And y'all seen it in the past anyway. Sheree don't pay no mammy fucking body. She sit there and told Drew, bitch, I didn't actually buy all this shit. All these motherfucking balloons, all this golden shit. Uh, bitch, no, I didn't agree to all this. I was out making she by trying to make she by Sheree someday happen. <laughs> Soon is what I was doing. You were supposed to play in the party, and now you just got an invoice. Sheree said, uh-uh, that bullshit is not going to work for her. And apparently, like I said, the blogs are saying that she by Sheree still ain't paid uh, po, uh, po Drew uh, uh, her side of the, uh, the bread for that party. But nevertheless, anyway, the party went off without a hitch. Well, take that back. It had a couple of hitches in it. But anyway, they arrived to the party. You know, everybody showed up and down to the thing. And even Kenya and, and, and Marlo messy ass <clears throat> showed up moments behind each other. And apparently Kim slammed, uh, Kenya slammed the door in Marlo's face when she did know she was behind her. She saw it because she said, everywhere I go, this beast is somewhere behind me. <laughs> and she slammed the door in that baby's face. And she came up in that one of them outfits that she got up in that closet that she had rented to somebody and got it back dry clean, Marlo. And came up in there, you know, being the grandest thing and whatnot and all that. And then they found out the party was for the both of them. And both of them bitches were some kind of upset, but they both went along with the flow. You know, and, and, and the girls brought the cousins and the friend friends and all this other shit uh, over to the house and made sure they came to the party to make, it so, uh, to make it more sincere and stuff like that to let them know, hey, look, this is a, a, your birthday party slash uh, a friend invention. Um, everything was pretty much going kind of swimmingly until Marlo's cousin Shantae fucked up and stood up with that two-strand wig upon her head, that shake-and-go wig. Listen. You, Shantae, you could have sat your messy ass down with that toast you gave it to Mike. You get so emotional. Uh, you don't know what to do with yourself and all this shit and fake crying and shit. There was positive vibes in the room at the time, bitch. Why you had to get your ass up with that stop and go ass shaking busy by the wig, that old uh, uh, drape duster on your fucking head, and stand up there with that old green Christmas outfit on and get up there and start some shit. But I tell I be telling Marlo all the time not to be going back and forth with Ken. Just don't argue her. Stop poking the bear, bitch. Your little five minutes of fame, ten minutes of fame, have long they had you on the camera, because I only seen you for five minutes. You know, you and you could have put at, at least put a little blush on or something you around all these beautiful women. Not to say that Shantae wasn't, but without that makeup, let's be honest. Fuck, put a face on, bitch. Don't be coming up on the camera down here to Bravo. And I ain't talking about no face like no little lipstick you done picked up down up in the dollar store, bitch. This is your chance, bitch. Go get you some MAC product and, and get somebody over there and let them beat your face. Bitch, y'all invite me. Bravo got a makeup artist. Y'all got a makeup artist. I need to be right for the television, for the peoples. I can't be stepping up. And damn, your hair wasn't right, bitch. Come on now. No. Look like she took one of those spray bottles and, and put a little oil up in there and a little water and shook it up and sprayed that wig down to try to get that Janet Jackson effect, but the shit didn't work out just the way she thought she would because nine times out of ten, Looked like if she did wet that motherfucker, it, it dried up halfway over there on the drive uh, down to the Drew's house on the party. So, Shante, sit your mess ass down somewhere. I was all about you with the message at first, but you mess as your motherfucking cousin is. Um, after Shante got the shit started, Kenya and, and Marlo got to go in there one on the throats again, you know, uh, uh, below the belt, by damn near going below the belt again. And Drew had to go there and, and get all the bullshit calmed down right quick with her fucked up Achilles. And, and, and ask her mama to come over there, or uh, the evangelist, to come over. Hallelujah. And share a word with the people and give them bitches some prayer because they had to lost their mind. All of them were just going back shit crazy in the first place because the shit was about to get started. You believe it or not, the shit, if it hadn't got started already, the shit was about to get started and hit the fan for real, for real. And I felt like a glass of wine was probably going to fly in somebody's face and it was going to get real ugly and it was going to leave off on being continued to the next episode or some shit like that. Um... And here they came with another stupid ass motherfucking game. I didn't. I think the game was something uh, something below the belt. Um, the questions was again to get some moment started, as they as they usually do with these games. It's always to start some shit because that's what they do. They start some shit. Did it at the beginning. Matter of fact, the very part of the show or uh, this season, they started with some stupid ass game, you know, at a children's party, and to pop the fuck off and everybody going bad shit crazy and shit talking about sucking dicks in the locker room and all. It was this this. This this treacherous trash. It's being trashy. And I was just hoping Marlo would just simmer down and just let just not let her trash inside just, you know, supersede her at that present moment. But uh uh um 
One of the questions, for, I think, was the first question came out. What if a friend girl made a statement about she felt like they was, she was offended by your... The same statement that Kenya made about Ross ass. He should have stayed in this fucking place. And all of a sudden, uh, uh, where's she at? Oh, a thousand things here. She decided to get up on, uh, stand up at the table and shit and how, Bitch, don't you wish you had a man like mine? Maybe. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure at some parts of the day, he and the duck sitting there saying, I wish I had a bitch that can actually stand up for herself. I ain't always got to be in the line like for taking up for her because she started shit and can't finish shit. Told you before, Sanya, listen. Keep your mouth off that. You done already admitted this girl to rip your ass to shreds and jamica, and yet you want to jump up with the same bullshit again and tearing up uh, Drew's nice rental set of furniture over there, knock that motherfucking seat. I, if I was you, I'd have put your ass out. I'd have put you out and I'd have sent you a bill for that chair. I probably wouldn't finish paying for myself and Drew's shoes. I don't know. I'm just saying maybe, possibly. Could be. I don't know. I'm just saying. But the bottom line is, saying you sit your crazy ass down, you know, good and full motherfucking well, you wrong for what the fuck you was doing. And you shouldn't have came at that woman if you wasn't ready for it. And Kenya ain't the strongest one in the group, but she would eat a bitch up if you let her. And you a new bitch to the group, and you got sucked all up, ate up, chewed up, and spit out by um, shit. You didn't get to the top level. Over here to Kenya, nobody, or, or, or Sharia, nobody. You had, to start, you had to start off with Kenya. You still couldn't uh, complete that level. So good luck on um, completing that phase. Again, I get back to Sharia. Uh, bringing out she by Sheree someday, uh, 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 invitations, you know, let me tell you, invitations, fucking, uh, fucking gorgeous, beautiful invitations, I lived for them, when she pulled them bitches out, I almost died for them, because at the end of the day, I'm like, yes, bitch, this, I see you now, I see you, she by Sheree is about to be this day, but oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, listen, she handed out them fucking invitations to every, every woman in the room that was associated with the group, <clears throat> That she wanted to be there. And the invitations again were fucking gorgeous. Hats off to whoever made them bitches. Hats off for her with the idea. That's the way you do a fashion show. That is beautiful. But with all that being said, I'm like, Candy, like, okay, so the show is in two weeks. And you saying you ain't got a piece of motherfucking clothing. You know, bitch, like, you need to go over there and call Mattel. Uh, 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 what the other place is, Mattel. Or uh, one of them other, uh, you know, uh, toy companies. Uh, uh, Hasbro or somebody like that and fuck with them cause them clothes ain't gonna fit none of your models that you ain't got yet cause you ain't got the budget for it but you done spent a million dollars on this shit and still ain't got no mammy motherfucking models you done lost your freaky ass mind you crazy you is bat shit cold hearted cuckoo cock eye crazy there's no way I, and cause me personally unless I know I'm, I've, I've been guilty of, of it before in the past past years ago of saying fuck that my plans for my, my party is just, this is what it is. I put out my invitations. Yes, I might have been lacking a few things, but I knew I had the motherfucking budget to get it. If I didn't get it from where I wanted it from, it was going to come from somewhere. So this party was going to go off without a hitch. But you were there talking like you don't know if the check going to come through from um, the uh, the from the Bravo people's in time to get the rest of the shit done. If you got to go out and take another loan, you know, put a lien on, on them or Chateau Them or what. But listen. Bitch, listen, you better get up with, uh, with one of them ladies and get some business advice and find out who you can get you a quick loan from and get this thing off the fucking ground because at this point, I'm with, I'm, I'm side with Candy. You may as well go ahead and, and, and start designing clothes for Barbie. Or at least the fucking dolls because you ain't getting no fucking way with this. I need you to do better. And I need this next motherfucking episode to produce everything that you've been motherfucking talking about when you pull out the motherfucking show. Pull out all the stops. Everything but the naked people, bitch. Pull out all the stops. I've been waiting. We all been waiting. And we want to see some shit. Uh, even to the point now she's so desperate for models, she done linked up with Apollo. I mean, at the end of the day, shit, I mean, uh, it, she says she by Sheree got to get off today. So listen, Sheree apparently keeps the next car in her back pocket. Uh, here, we seen with Tyrone, and he going to show up down to the thing as far we done seen. So I'm waiting to see what the fuck that's going to look like and how that's going to go down, because <clears throat> it's a hot mess, but she went over there to the coffee shop, or the bread shop, sandwich shop, whatever the fuck they were sitting at the shop, and, 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 and had Apollo come over there, and he explained to her how, you know, these men's in prison don't be large and pretty much no bitch, and how she was bamboozled and made a fool out of it, ain't nobody, ain't nobody business but her husband, ain't nobody fault but hers also, but he explained all that shit to her and see, told her what he sees with some of the men, how they carry on, 
you know, <clears throat> from woman to woman to get what they have to get to survive in there. They're in survival mode, bitch. You don't think about that? They're in survival mode when they're in prison. They'll tell you anything. But anyway, she asked Apollo to be in the show. And, you know, I'm pretty sure she probably ain't gonna pay him shit because she had to call and ask him for a favor as a friend. And ultimately, after, you know, a few minutes of choking his ego and swaying him and stuff like that, talking about his body and shit, Apollo finally agreed, you know, anything to help a friend, little my friend, da 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 da, and all this different shit here. So I don't know what the relationship between Phaedra and Sheree is, or to even have a relationship. I didn't know Apollo and um, Sheree had a relationship, or a friendship, should I say. Friendship between any of the group of the three. But I don't know. We're going to see what the fuck is given on this next episode and see if she by Sheree going to be off this Sunday or not. We <laughs> we got to figure this thing the fuck out um, and help her. Y'all got to send us some good vibrations, honey, because she seemed to be on, on the fritz. So, but anyway... Um, <clears throat> That's all I have for, for this one here. We just got to see what the end, run on, see what the end going to bring. So anyway, <clears throat> again, for those of you who have subscribed to the channel, I cannot thank you enough for stopping by, fucking with my crazy ass, hanging out with me, spending time with me, and liking these videos and these commenters. I'm loving it so much. I'm still trying to get around to all these comments. Give me some time. I'm coming. Uh, but I really appreciate it. For the new people, the new subscribers, like I said, come on, y'all, stop playing. About five or six of y'all, a uh, hundred of y'all to stop by this motherfucker and keep on checking me out. Just go ahead and hit the goddamn subscribe button so I can see these videos when I put them out. I'm looking at my numbers every day. I told y'all I check my shit. I check on y'all. I check on us. I, I look at it. So stop checking by and just, you know, having an affair with me. Go ahead and get in a relationship and hit that subscribe button. <laughs> Quit that playing. But anyway... Share with somebody you know. Share with somebody you don't know. Share with a motherfucker you like. Hell, share with a motherfucker you don't like. Because if you don't like me, I'm pretty sure. Check the views. Check the reviews. Check the numbers. They're, like I said, all the way up. They're going up. Somebody else will. Hallelujah. And last thing is, I love you guys. Love yourself. But only love somebody else if they're willing to love on you in the same way back. Because I'm telling you, ain't nobody got time for that fuckery. And that bullshit. All right? So y'all take care. I got some more videos I got to get. I got some time off. So I'm about to, I'm about to punch it. I'm about to hit it to the metal. All right. To the next video. Later.